Hello one and all, this is Local Sovlox, and welcome back to the final episode of Orwell, Ignorance is Strength. We struggled a bit with the Orwell system last time. We finished off the episode trying to convince Raben not to publish his article that was going to really provoke the situation. And uh, so we accused his wife of seeing a patient illegally and he did not take well to that. He took it as an attack and he said he was gonna get revenge by exposing everyone who was involved, personal information, the same way we did with his wife. So let's see how this episode's gonna go. I'm excited to see how this is gonna wrap up. Let's start a new day. Orwell's got to, they got to upgrade their servers. <laughs> Here we go. So here's our summary of day two. The provocation. With the attention he had gained, Raban Vart tried to publish a prov provocation aimed at the Pargesian president, Kassart. We were not able to stop Raman Vart from releasing the provocation against President Kassart. As I understand it, uh, I was correct. Karen and Ilya were having an affair, and I just wasn't able to get there uh, in time. But I think that was the way to stop Raban. I I'm not. I wonder if he would still, or at least attempt to stop. I wonder if he would still publish Karen's arrest. We found a way to get Karen Livian Vart arrested to distract from the prov provocation. So. Um, her, the patient that she was seeing had uh, planted a bomb. Uh, Nina, there's her name there, Nina Matronova. Uh, that's the patient she was seeing illegally. And she went to see her at the mall where she was working and where she planted the bomb. And another um, team arrested her. Um, and she was like, she was really close to actually dying uh, there. And uh, so what did we learn about Ilya? He's a lead editor at People's Voice, right? He intends to quit his job and leave Bonton with recently acquired money. He received a large payment in his bank account recently, which we found out was probably from uh, cards, the card tournament win. He didn't log in at the time supplies went missing at his employer, Watergate Pharma. He had asked the colleague to take over for him at the time of the missing supplies. I don't think it's really, uh, this stuff is all that important to go through. He is disloyal to his brother and is, uh, is questioning his actions. That's probably gonna play a part in this one. And let me just see if there's anything important to recap here. Committed to having misused Ilya Vart sessions for counseling the army veteran. Arrested by an intervention team, securing the circle mall in the bottom bombing case. And Raban, he appeared to be discouraged and unsure about his course of action. So he's not really sure that he's doing the right thing either. So. Need to bear that in mind as we approach day three, the final day of Orwell. You're back again, just in time. We have need of you. Raban Vart nabbed us with that article on Kassart yesterday. It's gone viral, as we expected. The situation is heating up. Of course, President Kassart could not leave it at that. He filed an extradition request this very morning for Vart. Prime Minister Blaine has shifted his schedule to fly out to Trifolith and meet Kassart. Convince him of letting go, or else all hell will break loose. Okay, so this has really caused a... This has really, really caused a shitstorm. Pardon my French. Raban Vart might have taken a severe blow but he is far from giving up. Instead, he fired shots. See for yourself. People's voice. War is inevitable. They are out to discredit me and bring down what the people's voice stands for, but we are stronger. Kassart may have demanded my extradition, but this war is not over. We will fight back against the traitors Kassart and Blaine. 
who own this manipulative government apparatus designed to keep us under control. The government of the nation has have dragged my family into this conflict, and I will not let them get away with this. I'm still here, and so is the people's voice, and we are loud. We have a strong group of supporters who are loyal and will help us get back on track. Know thyself, know thy enemy. We will fight back with a completely new people's voice, resonating a kind of strength never, never before seen. The government of the nation has declared war on the people's voice. They are trying to enslave their own people and my people by manipulating the media. Down with the government, down with Kassart and Blaine. Guess we're gonna report that. It's declared a state of war against the cooperation of Kassart and Blaine. War? Can you believe it? Who does this prick think he is? Agent, this has to end today. Vart will no longer undermine the peace in neither Pargas nor the nation. If it's war he wants, we can accommodate him. We have our own arsenal, the likes of which Vart doesn't dare to dream about. I wonder how much he actually knows about Orwell, if at all. Probably nothing at the moment, but he does have some connections. So he might be exposed. When Orwell was created, the office requested a number of additional features beyond the day-to-day -day tasks of investigators. Some top-level government members objected. They had the obnoxious idea to integrate an ethical codex into Orwell, limiting its capabilities. Naturally, this would not do for us. We are the nation's wardens and we won't be restricted by some arbitrary set of rules. So we found a way, as we always do, to develop a branch of the Orwell project, the very piece of software you're using right now. Time to make use of its full potential. The Influencer. Behold the Influencer, the centerpiece of our very own version of Orwell. Not even the government has a clue this thing exists. It can spread a story through social media channels efficiently and thoroughly, and I'm putting you in charge of it. First we need the thesis, a key statement which Raban made in his latest article. The government of the nation has dragged my family into this conflict. So do I... Oh. No. I'm clicking on this, but it's not doing anything. What does it say? Upload our band's course state. Okay. Okay. So I need to upload this. The government dragging his family into the conflict? They should have clearly opposed Raban's actions and not, none of this would have happened. Well, we will counteract this claim accordingly. Let me see that in the influencer. The government was willfully uh, has willfully dragged Raban Vart's family into the conflict. Well, here we go. Here is how this works. You can't simply make up and randomly spread stuff. Instead, I need you to get me more palpable. I need you to get me palpable information which can be used to counter Raban's statement. From pairs of data chunks that create a certain context together, I can construct a narrative which can then be spread into the influencer. So find me data chunks to construct a narrative from. With the thesis set in the influencer, new data chunks may be discovered in old documents. Take a look around.
438,000 listeners. Well, let's take a look at what's going on with Karen. So what's the what's the what's the thesis here? The government has willfully dragged Raban Vart's family into the conflict. Or did he drag his family into the conflict? Looks like we're not on any kind of time constraint here, which is nice. Misappropriation, misappropriation of funds is the charge. She was seeing that uh, she was taking money and seeing clients illegally. Report. Suspect was arrested by intervention team during evacuation procedures at Circle Mall after a bomb threat was unearthed by investigators. Levine Vart was found on her phone in close proximity to the trash can believed to be the location of the explosive device. Suspect was taken into custody as a potential threat. Thus far, the investigation has shown that the suspect was on the phone to her husband, Raban Vart. No connection to the attack can be proved at this time. However, while in custody, it became clear that the suspect was wanted for investigation of claims that they misappropriated funds in an unrelated case. As a result, the suspect remains in custody. Raban truly had some remarkable timing with his call to Karen. The wrong woman in the wrong place might turn out to be a windfall for us. This is good, but not enough on its own. All we need for this to work is some fitting context to mix it with. Is there something in the phone call? We could use... No. What's this? A new email from Ilya to unknown person. Dear Mr. McGuire, please find my written statement below as requested. I arrived at work early yesterday afternoon around 3.51 p.m. Soon after my arrival, I noticed I had left my security card at home. So in absence of Mr. Uh, Budilla, I decided to inform my colleague, Mr. Ellison, about it. Mr. Ellison assured me I would be totally fine despite being unable to log in properly and that he would get the matter sorted for me. This is explaining why he didn't uh, sign in to work, even though he was scheduled to work. During the entire shift, starting from 4 p.m., I was working on maintaining the assigned technical instruments in sections A through G until I finally finished up and left around 11.22 p.m and got home where I still am. Apart from the missing security card, there were no unusual events. I did not even see anybody in the labs, and I'm sure I wasn't seen by anyone else either. In short, I was at work on Thursday as planned, and I have been there, I have been the entire shift on my own. Mr. Ellison will gladly confirm the statement. Ilya Vart. Ah, yes. was yesterday. I will not allow you to threaten the reputation of the people's voice. So they're actually... <laughs> this makes it look like Karen is working against Raban. So what does it say? It leads Karen Livian Vart to threaten the people's voice. She's on our side. That's the... Um, that's the narrative here. Raban Vart is becoming more and more paranoid. He senses conspiracy and danger anywhere. There's him right. He sees his wife as a danger to his work, and then she gets arrested out of nowhere. One could draw conclusions from that. Why not help people a bit with it? What do you think of this? Agent, the first narrative is ready to be spread through the influencer. To do so, drag it to the slot in the influencer window and confirm. Using the influencer is 
Using the influencer is extensive and takes about an hour of time to complete. We'll only get very limited chances of spreading narratives today. Make sure they count. However, I, I should probably warn you. What's out there is out there forever, and information can be a most devastating weapon. Now, if you do the honors... So we got a hashtag, blame on Raban. Did Raban Vart sell his wife Karen to the cops to get rid of her? Leaked chat protocol shows he had seen her as a threat to his work. Ooh, that is nasty. I could I could see how this could take an hour to spread. <laughs> I guess what they're trying to say is like you're you're planting the seed. Like it, it would take literally a literally split second to like tweet it out or something. You're spreading the seed and it, it's going to take like an hour for it to, to spread around. I can I could buy that. I see the time is act the hour is actually passing. The first information spread by your command alone. It's a beautiful thing. The destruction of truth, isn't it? I believe we pulled the right strings there. People have swallowed the bait as you can see on Blabber. We had some good impact on his listener count. I have no doubt Raban won't let, uh, won't let this go so easily. I uh, won't let go so easily, sorry. I wouldn't be surprised to see an appropriate response from him soon. Perhaps you could find out what he's up to before he's actually publishing it, so we can prepare our next narrative beforehand. Oh, I see. We're decreasing his influence. Very cool. He wanted a war. He's got one. Let's see the reactions. People's voice. Why were you on the phone with your wife when she was at the Circle Mall? Raban. Please don't tell me you're responsible for these bombings. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I mean... This is kind of cool, but I also feel extremely evil here. No way. I do not have to answer to you, but I shall tell you this much. I have nothing to do with these bombings. You might want to point your finger at a certain corrupt government. Why was your wife at the Circle Mall yesterday? Did you order the Bonten bombings? It says Moonrise Hell, a dude wearing a mask. Of course not. You are deeply misinformed. Uh, Horseface says, You told your wife to go to the Circle Mall so she would walk right into this trap? You're a monster. People's voice responds, I did not and would never manipulate my wife to walk into any trap. Whatever information or interpretation of such you have, it is false. Good, good. Looks like we have a draft for an article. Removed contributor status from user Ilya. Hello. Turning on his family. Could it be that our actions cause a bit of trouble among the ranks of the people's voice? Good. I'm still like... <laughs> I'm still not sure the direction I want to take this in. Because if we... We could actually help Raban. We could, we could actually help him. And to try to take down these corrupt governments. The question is uh, always in my head. It's that's going to cause chaos and people will die. But... How much corruption are we willing to take for to sustain peace it's like kind of a, a question i keep asking myself in this game let's see what let's see what he's got going here destroy the media monsters 
if we start taking stuff from his article before he publishes it, he's going to know something's up. For sure. He, he'll know that we're, we're spying on him. I mean, he must know that already, but... We will always fight back. In the dark caves of the endless information network, they lurk. Out to get any innocent victim standing in their way. As from now, I shall call them Media Monsters. Okay. The government apparatus designed to control our minds. These awful creatures who cannot be considered human are again trying to damage my family members in order to get to me. They cannot tear us apart. Before we report that, let's take a look at this. Our government leader is nothing but a hypocrite. Oh, I see. Contributors are starting to question him now. Raban, I've had enough of this one-man show you call a collective. This article is contrary to everything the People's Voice stands for, at least in my mind. We're long past the point of no return. We're no longer a group of journalists with thoughtful and considered rhetoric. Instead, the site has become a mouthpiece for an egocentric maniac who declares war against governments. I will not put up this with this anymore. I quit. It's true. I mean, even that article that he published about Cassart, one of you pointed out in the comment section, he just did some quick internet searches and like just grabbed whatever information was out there and took it at face value and then put it out there without any kind of evidence. He just, you know, accused Cassart of all this stuff without providing like, you know, any kind of evidence at all, like links to uh, sources and stuff like that. He just accused them. He didn't really, wasn't really journalism. Raban says, you're such a coward. You always have been. Now that we finally see our influence growing, that our voice is being heard, the changes in the air, you just run off and quit. The other thing I notice is like, <laughs> that's 400,000 people. That's really not that many people. Um, to like, I don't, I feel like that's not enough people to like topple governments. Like, in my opinion, <laughs> it's kind of like small potatoes, but so like, should we be that focused on this guy? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we are, by fighting against him, we are giving him a platform to stand on to grow, right? It's almost like we should just ignore him. Um, you just run off and quit. I should have known that uh, when you signed on that you weren't built to stand this heat. Just another bag of air that chickens out whenever things start to get really interesting. Seriously, Raban? Insulting our staff? What kind of leader are you? What kind of journalist are you? You have long stopped uncovering the so-called truth. You have turned into a liar and puppeteer yourself. You're no better than Kassar or Blaine. Or the others that you keep criticizing. Count me out. I'm done. Shannon's out. Raban responds, I will not put up with this. Grow a backbone, you cowards. Don't worry. I'll take away your contrib contributor status. I don't need you anyway. If you're not willing to go all the way with me, you're against me. You've been in my way for far too long already. But this is the narrative that we're working on, so... And this fits. Let's see. Believes his family members to be loyal to him. So he thinks that they're loyal, but we found more information to prove that they're not. Remember, we have... Um, where was it? We have we have evidence. I remember of uh, Ilya also questioning. It, uh, is this loyal to his brother Rabban Vart? Yeah, and also he removed the contributor status. Right. So let's um, let's report this. If they're loyal, why does he? Why would he remove that status? His family is loyal to him? Oh, please. I wonder if Raban believes himself what he writes there. In any case, let's see if we can shake up that feeling of loyalty a bit and prove Raban wrong. For himself and for the public. 
Agent, get me pairs of data chunks from which I can construct narratives that we can spread. So I guess it's always in pairs. So it's just like, I don't keep building on the previous narrative. I just keep creating new ones. Pay attention to anything we might use to put Ilya or Karen's loyalty to him in doubt. Uh, Van Vart's family has always been loyal to him and will remain. I wonder where that... Where did I get this? Uh... He's disloyal to his brother, Raban. That's other editors. Um, that includes his brother, but... Oh yeah, Harrison. That's right. This is from the first. This is from the first um, season. I think it was in a phone call, wasn't it? I don't know if I'm supposed to. You know what I wish? I wish I could click on this and it would take me to the data chunk that I got it from. That would be that would be really nice. This spices are offline. Oh, a new more browser history. Damien Kassart's history of fabricated elections. An investigative documentary of government fraud. something new here. Event log. Karen Levine 80. We have her PC. Oh. Damn right we want to tune in. I can't believe they arrested Karen. I'm not sure what to make of it. What was she doing there at the mall? Today? In the middle of a police raid? Claims of misappropriating funds? That all sounds like total bullshit. I'm just trying to understand. Do you know anything? This is not a good time. It's okay. I understand. Sorry. No. I don't think you understand at all. My wife has been abducted by ruthless government forces to get me and break me. Yet here we are, feign concern and immediately question what I know. Why? Ah, I see. You must have read it too. That I called her right before the incident. Herban. It is true. Paranoia. I called moments before. What does that mean to you, dear brother? She was there against my advice to track down this impertinent army woman. Karen wouldn't listen. She just pressed on and ignored me. She suffered the consequences because of it. How can you say that? She suffered the consequences of not listening to you, her wise and all-knowing husband. What did you say? How dare she defy the great Raban Vart? She was there, helping her patient, and you have no compassion. You are more concerned about being... How do you dare say that she is my wife well how dare you try to blame her for getting mixed up in all of this you insolent pest you have done nothing but snub me ever since we left the encampment i've had it with this crap for the record if you hadn't kicked me out of tpv i'd quit go then Boom. finally you never cared for our cause anyway 
that's all we need, all right? I mean, the guy just keeps just putting the information out there that we can hang him with. So we've got a couple options. Be little to Ilya Vart since they left the encampment. Thinks Karen Livian Vart brought the incident unto herself by ignoring him. Always been loyal. Will always be. It's, uh, I feel like... This isn't proving that Ilya is not loyal. This proves more that Il that his family, Karen in particular, um, is disloyal by ignoring him. Let's just see what else updated here. Probably the article, right? Banned access from the phone. Okay, did we have did we have his phone already? No. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Is this something that we already had? We had his number, but we didn't have his phone ID. Okay, I think that was one thing that I kind of took exception with in the last one, um, that we had his number, but we weren't able to access his phone. But I think we need the UID to be able to access it. So that's, that's fair enough. There's Karen's desktop. Okay, what do we what do we want to look at first? Let's start with Ilya's phone. Playing cards. To be expected. That's Karen, right? Looks like a work Christmas party. Oh, it's Cassie Watergate. My bad. My bad. She was, um, she was from the first season. And she was, like, um, the daughter of the people that owned the pharmaceutical company that Ilya worked for. Looked, looked a bit like Karen. Wait, her... Ilya's phone's desktop... has a picture of Karen. <laughs> okay. March 20th, 2017. Hey you. Karen says, hey, what's up? Just wanted to see whether the website I set up for you is still running. Yeah, all good. Guess I totally forgot to even thank you for it. How about catching up? Okay, I think we saw this conversation on the other side. We saw this on uh, Karen's phone. July 16th, Cassandra Watergate. God, I'm so sick of this place. How do you keep up with this, Ilya? Every time I see you, it seems like nothing ever troubles you. I'm holding on to my dreams. You know, one day I'm getting out of here. I can feel it. I'll only do the stuff I want to then. Cassandra says, Huh? Didn't think you'd be one to call it quit so easily. Ilya responds, Nah, it's not exactly easy. Truth be told, I often dream about quitting. And not just quitting, but getting out and away from my brother. From everything and everyone. But I can't leave him. He needs me. Sandra says, I feel you. I can't imagine how. Just had a look at that Xmas party photo of you on my phone. You seem so carefree. Your parents are crazy rich people. Nothing should be worrying you. Sandra says, crazy rich assholes more like. We argue about the course of the company constantly. Blue hair. Are you even thinking? You don't represent the values of the company with blue hair. It's always the fucking company all the time. Billy responds, I get it. My brother can be like that at times. Shit, that's ugly. I thought they were kind of nice. Cassandra says, for the cameras only. Billy responds, if he hated that much, why don't you go then? Cassandra says, how? It's what they call the golden cage. Life is nice and they feed you with silver spoons. Shit. But there's no getting away. I mean, they're feeding you with shit. It's not too pleasant. No getting away. Not from family. You can't run from a name. Ilya says, yeah, right. Cassie? 
what would you really like to do if you could just walk your own path? Cassandra wants wants to do art. Definitely art. Always love that. I know it sounds kind of dumb. Ilya says, it doesn't sound dumb to me. Keep dreaming one day, perhaps. Cassandra says, yeah, if lightning strikes me or something. I like this. We've already hit hit them with Karen. Let's prove that Ilya uh, is disloyal. Wants to get away from Rabban and Bart. Let's keep looking, though. Oh, is that... Hold on, is that it? Yeah. Quo tracking. That's where Ilya is right now. Penn Street. We already had this, right? We have her phone ID, so might as well report this also. Any names that stick out here? To the future too. <laughs> Never forget, ask Uncle Simos about Captain Ilya Janeway. Has an uncle named Simos. Okay. Blaine cancels meeting for a surprise visit uh, in Trifolith. Why? Prime Minister cancels crisis meeting and instead visits Harka's capital. Plans to lead renewal of stalled negotiations between Kassart and opposition. On Saturday morning, Prime Minister Blaine made a surprise shift of priorities. Originally scheduled for a crisis meeting with Secretary of Security Catherine Delacroix, in regards to the recent Bonten terror assaults, the Prime Minister instead made plans to mediate in the more than troubled negotiations with President Cassart and the opposition. The original crisis meeting was removed from the official party website, and Blaine took a National Air Force flight straight to Trifolith, the capital of Pargus. As a government spokesman said, the Prime Minister has landed at Trifolith International Airport about an hour ago and was promptly welcomed by President Cassart with military honors. This alone gave the opposition enough reason to once again question the impartiality of the Prime Minister and announce that Blaine would not be accepted as a proper mediator. I think elections would be good in Par Pargas, right? Oh, I see. He was going to meet with Delacroix, but uh, decided to go right to uh, Triplet. It'd be nice if we could somehow encourage those elections to happen. Okay, let's go back to what we were following there. Hmm. It's the first we've heard of an uncle. Let's take a look at Karen's uh, computer. Private. Saved protocol. Rabban83. Karen says, Hey, lovely man, how are you today? Go to Karen's profile. Rabban says, Hey, not so good. Karen replies, What happened? Rabban, I stood in the lunch line for one and a half hours, and then there was nothing but bread left. You know, I'm not all fussy with food, but after not having any lunch for the last two days, it stresses me out. The guy at the food handout told me to fuck off if I didn't like it. Damn. Karen says, oh my god, I have no idea how you stay so calm. 
makes me furious even hearing about it. I would have exploded a long time ago. If the guy at the office canteen talked to me like that, I'd get him fired. Raban says, you know you can't compare this place to an office canteen. Karen says, I know, it's just... How is it even legal to treat people like that? Raban is so calm compared to the way he is now. I can understand how Karen could be like attracted to him at this point. Raban says, calm down, love. I don't mind people being assholes. They're just stressed out themselves. What really bugs me is that nobody really gives a shit about anyone here. Everyone is just trying to get by without being hungry or tired day, day by day. Hang in there, darling, Karen says. Never forget you're a real hero to the others and to me. Raman says, I love how you always want to help me, but please stop saying that. It makes me uncomfortable. Karen says, you're far too modest. You, you should be proud of what you've done. Anyway, not much longer now. I can't wait. Raman says, by the way, I've picked a location. I think we could have a beautiful wedding ceremony at Bonton City Park. I just wanted to keep it small and in the open air. Instead of renting a huge venue and making a big fuss about it. Plus, I think it'll make for some really nice, serene photos. Karen says, anything you want is fine for me. Or sorry, Raban says, anything you want is fine for me. Uh, but Karen, you're sure you want this, aren't you? I I'm getting the feeling I've been rushing you into something that might not be good for you. Karen says, Raban, come on. You didn't rush me at all. It was my idea. Do you want this? If you want it, I'm absolutely sure. I love you. Raban says, yes, I, I love you too. Karen says, then let's do it. We have a conflict. He's in love with Raban Bart. What's this? Married each other in uh, Monty City Park. Okay, well, let's... That could be important. Very picturesque. Maybe you can find a photo somewhere? Unknown data chunk conflict. Is there something else? Something else update here? No. Case report patient number PR34207. Patient name Raban. Weekly counseling and two hour sessions. I am Karen Levine and I have been working for Bonton Rehab as a clinical psychologist since February 2010. My specialist field is psychological trauma. Full details of my qualifications and project history will be provided separately by my employer, the Bonton Rehab Council. So patient history. The patient is a Pargesian refugee whom I have been treating since February 2011. The patient was assigned to Outer Bonton Reception Camp, where he was treated for symptoms of PTSD. Traumatic events and severe injury that caused the patient to lose his ability to walk in his home country, coupled with his recent immigration to the nation, are the major con contributing factors. There would be progression. The patient was initially very unresponsive and reclusive, even apathetic in therapy sessions. Occasionally, the patient would even switch to a rather aggressive tone when I pushed too much towards him revealing details about his experiences and emotional state. I'm not surprised. This is probably due to the difficult conditions of living in the refugee encampment for an extensive amount of time, which is very much in conflict with the patient's personality, valuing strong individuality. Around the summer of 2012, the patient went through a sudden change. He seemed to become more outgoing, happier, and willing to talk more. Though, he was still trying to keep conversations superficial. Throughout the sessions, the patient has been opening up more and more. I feel like we have been making tremendous progress. In addition, the patient also seemed to much more appreciated. The patient also seemed uh, much more appreciated by fellow camp residents. Okay. As of writing this, I am unsure whether to attribute the change to the effects of the therapy or to external factors. He's falling in love with you, Karen. Therapist recommendations. Although the patient seems to have made a lot of progress during the past months, I strongly recommend to extend therapy and would like to keep him under close observation personally to ensure the progress achieved by the patient so far continues 
and to determine the exact cause of the change in personality. I will therefore file a request for extending therapy by six months. Behaved reclusively and apathetically in refugee camps. Became happier and more outgoing mid-2012. Tended to observe that event art personally. I don't know if that really uh, fits with any of our, with our um, narrative. Well, it does, if we want to support that, and that, I mean, I guess that's the question. Could we, could we just support him? Do we want to support him? I don't know yet. Beautiful Dewhurst. Why would she throw, she throw this out? Dewhurst is the nation's most multicultural city with beautiful cafes and markets from all over the world. She wants to, she wants to leave, that's why. It's a beautiful place for young couples and singles to enjoy an adventurous and open-minded lifestyle. Maybe with Ilya. There's sightseeing, lots of beautiful spots in Dewhurst, a classical style town hall. Built in 1780 is definitely worth a visit. The most popular photo spot is the scenic fountain of dancing Puti. And cuisine, of course. Dewhurst provides you with restaurants, cafes, and small diners with dishes from around the world. Don't forget to try our famous Dewhurst hot dogs. <laughs> okay. Is that is that something a city's famous for? Hot dogs? I, I just go to IKEA if I want hot dogs. Although, I Ikea is kind of like a city, isn't it? That's it, right? I'm guessing Karen and Ilya were maybe planning on running away together. To Dewhurst. They're in the trash, though. Oh, there's another one. This is Ilya. I am Karen Levine. Okay, that's just the same thing. The patient immigrated to the nation in February 2011 as a Parkesian refugee after his brother was involved in a school bombing, losing his ability to walk. I have not treated the patient since that time. Therapy progression. While being very shy and unwilling to talk about details of ex his experiences for several weeks at the beginning of therapy, the patient has slowly become more outgoing and open after several sessions. His optimism and overall social and friendly character, as well as a tendency to look at the bright side of things, has helped him a lot to get through the psychological trauma of the hardships he and his brother faced back in Pargas. As the patient slowly opened up, he especially emphasized his heroic escape from military service in Pargas's in Parg's, Pargas at multiple occasions. Especially emphasized his heroic escape from military service, okay. He also seemed to become more and more interested in myself and my private life, making it difficult for me to maintain my professional distance as a therapist. So Ilya was immediately attracted to Karen. I also talked to him about his brother and his increasingly reclusive behavior, urging Ilya to assist his disabled brother. Therapist recommendations. The therapy is regarded as successful. I'm happy to dismiss my patient as largely recovered from his symptoms. However, I feel that it it would be very important for him and his brother to leave the refugee camp as soon as possible in order to maintain their mental health. Successfully f uh, fled from military services, service in Parkas. That's a conflict with another chunk. Okay. And then what does it say here? Optimistic and good natured. Okay, so question is, do we want to <laughs> support this narrative or create a different one? Um, I mean, if I think searching for the truth, we're way past that right now, right? The truth is, is that his family is turning on him. Um, but we're way past searching for the truth. We're, we're using the information for our own, for our own benefit. Let's see what it says here. Find parts data chunks, which could be used to put the loyalty of Rabbi Anvart's family members in doubt. Let's just continue down that road then. What was the best thing to use? 
probably the conversation. And honestly, probably this. Thinks Karen Levinvart brought the incident unto herself by ignoring him. Let's report this. Let's see what happens. Now this is downright heartless. And then he talks about loyalty. Oh, that wasn't enough. Okay. Let's try this then. Oh, that's not bad. Perhaps a past transgression of some kind we don't yet know about? Yes, we could use this to put Ilya's loyalty in question. But first we need something more concrete. Okay. Oh yeah, this. That's definitely it. That's the one. Wants to get away from Reban. Not surprising with a brother like that. Especially if he got belittled by Reban all the time. This would make for a fine story. Give me a moment. We now possess one narrative that we could, pe that we could potentially spread. However, we can only hit Raban after he has published his next article. We'll need to bide our time for the moment. Use that time well to dig for more narratives. Get me everything that we could use, that could be of use. All right. I think this would be a good time to take a break then. I'm curious to know how you would approach this situation. I, and I, I also, I'm not even sure if we had the option, to be honest. Do we want to support Raban, or do we want to try to take him down? I'm on the fence right now. I kind of... <laughs> I'd like to see the results of either choice, but... I don't know. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. This is Lucklesovlox, signing off for now. See you on the next one, and I love you all.